As always, it's Phil here from Radio.co, returning one last time to cap off this five-part series all about the basics of launching your very own internet radio station. So far in this series, I've covered pretty much everything you need to know about the technical, logistical and practical means of getting set up. From using Radio.co for all of your software needs, to then finding ways of attracting armies of adoring fans. From plugging in that very first USB microphone, to addressing your listeners in real time all around the world. And believe it or not, you actually have the basic know-how to get up and get online as soon as you want to. So why not activate a free 7-day trial from our website right now and see for yourself. Now, of course, the point of this series was to introduce you to the basics of broadcasting. So there are a couple more, let's say, advanced elements to broadcasting over the internet that I've yet to cover. Or perhaps there are still unanswered questions on the tip of your tongue that haven't been discussed. So, hence this final instalment of the series where I'll be covering some of the more frequently asked questions, buzzwords and ideas that I am personally asked on an almost daily basis. Thanks for checking out Radio.co on YouTube. If you want to see more kit reviews, live webinars and handy broadcasting tips, then give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe and click the bell icon. Uh, I'm also going to, well, address why I've got some ducks in a row here. I'm going to steal an idea that I did from a previous webinar where I'm going to do a trope of getting all your ducks in a row, you know, popular phrase of get everything all in a line, get everything all sorted out and you're ready to go. So I'm going to go through all of these next uh, and each duck um, covers a specific element or factor that you may or may not have thought about yet. It may still be very early days, but these are things just worth to consider that may be relevant to your particular plans with your online radio station. The previous webinar was done around Christmas, hence explaining the Christmas themed ducky. So what shows are you uh, going to be putting together? Or uh, again, are they going to be specialist shows? Is it going to be a generic kind of music show? Is you going to be playing your favorite content? If it's a talk show, of course, is it going to be something that's broadcasting temporarily? Like, are you just using it like a live podcast in a way? Is it going to be one live show a week and that's it? One show a day? Um, are you getting other people involved to talk about different topics? Or, you know, it's all, again, comes down to, I guess, uh, probably more of an early thought when it comes to radio. Is, you know, you're launching a station, great if you want to play a bit of music, but is it going to be just a smorgasbord of lots of different genres of music? Is it going to be purely yours? Um, you know, are you going to be doing, uh, you know, a traditional breakfast show appealing to people, a dry time show? You're going to have specialist content playing. And if that's the case, where's your content coming from? Is it content that you're creating? Is it going to be music that you are purchasing and finding? So shows kind of comes down to one of the uh, a buzzword that's going to kind of make a repeat in another one of these is a service. Is your radio station a service to people or is it purely uh, a way of escapism? You know, is it, are you telling people to listen to your station because you're playing your favorite music or it's music that you think they'll enjoy? Or is it a service? You know, is it going to be appealing to a community, whether that's local or a community all over the world? Just think about what sort of shows, themes, appeal each of them might have. Because again, it's great building a radio station dedicated to your favorite music, but is your music appropriate for where you want to take it? You know, is your station niche? Is it pretty generic? You know, it's all things just worth thinking about when it comes to the bigger picture of growing your station and making it more and making it appeal to as many people as possible. Or is it just a passion project that you want to launch and you really couldn't care any less about how many people listen to it? You know, you've got a blank canvas here with your online radio station and that includes shows about what you want to cover and how you want to cover it. Uh, next little ducky. Licensing, again, comes down to music that I've talked about already. And again, probably the, one of the most popular things I do get asked other than a piece of equipment. Licensing, do I need it? Now, that's only something you can generally answer yourself. But as a general rule of thumb, licensing is needed if you 
um, plan to play any copyrighted material on your station. If that's the case, then having a license is something that is strongly recommended. Now, from our perspective, we don't enforce licensing, but we do heavily recommend it just to make sure that you are broadcasting in the, in, in the legal right way. You know, you, you've got the thumbs up to pretty much play whatever you want. And that's what a license will generally provide. Now, unfortunately with licensing, it's quite a convoluted area and some of the information that you need, even from the people that supply it, can be as clear as mud sometimes. Uh, and that's because there are so many different variables involved. Um, generally, you want a license issued from an organization based in the country your station is based in. So if I was launching a radio station here from Manchester in the UK, I would obviously need to speak to an organization based in the UK and that organization will have their own costs involved, they'll have their own regulations. Um, you know, my license may only permit me to broadcast within my home country or there may be a few elsewhere that does allow people to, uh, to listen to it as well. So there's so many different variables and it can almost be kind of like a bespoke service. I mean, not quite, but you know, some of the quotes involved in licensing can boil down to what are you playing? How popular do you think your station's gonna be? Are you earning a revenue on your station? If so, how much do you envision? Um, you, know, like, you know, what artists are you gonna be playing? How often are you gonna be broadcasting? So many questions like that can only be answered by you really so it, it feels like a bit of a cop-out answer because it, it's something it's information i can't really give out because having not you know dealing with it personally um i couldn't accurately say categorically the costs and the regulations involved um but again if you want some more information about licensing we have it available on our website or if you just type in uh, on uh, you know on our blog or even google it radio.co licensing it's a great article there with links to the organizations from a lot of countries from all over the world uh if your country isn't listed on there um first of all i am sorry <laughs> and uh, yeah just get in touch just you know and we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do to help um but yeah if you are going to play music on your station that you do not own a licensing is strongly recommended and you know it can range anywhere from two hundred dollars up to thousands of dollars again ultimately depends on how big and i know uh, on what you're intending to do with your station if you are a talk based station there's no need for a license if you are playing music that you own like you specifically have written uh there's no need for a license and if you want to broadcast royalty free music you don't need a license uh, to, to play them. You, you may need a license to purchase them, but not to necessarily broadcast them. Soon as you play at least one track on your station, a license is something that we strongly recommend looking into. So it's up to you about whether you want to do it. So it's worth looking into because it can take, it can take a while to get the answers that you need and get the license ultimately sorted. So it's better just to investigate sooner rather than later. Community kind of falls into the promoting. Um, it's more of a decision. Um, and again, surprisingly, a popular question I get is, do I need to launch a community station? And, and for that, what is a community radio station? Again, beauty of internet radio, it's a global platform. People from all over the world are gonna to listen to it. Doesn't necessarily mean everyone from everywhere on earth is going to listen to your station. And there's also nothing wrong with creating a station dedicated to your specific niche local community and there's people halfway around the world listening to it. That, that's absolutely fine. You know, internet radio, because it's so accessible, it's, it's so much easier to get people involved in the radio because you're saying there's a new radio, you don't need to tune it in, you don't need to find a radio, just click on this link and you're listening to it. So yeah, if you're providing a community service, great. It's an easy way of people accessing radio. You know, they can take it with them. But it's also about, you know, are you providing a service in terms of, are you catering for your local community uh, and, uh, you know, uh, environment? So, you know, are you covering local events? Are you providing local news? Are you playing music uh, to help people get through their, their local days? Are you inviting people to get in touch, get involved with things? So it's just a great way of creating content. It can be, you know, making your radio station community focused can be a great way of um, uh, drumming up content for your station, such as there's a local event, why don't I go down there and make my presence felt? That kind of is a great way to get promoting as well, involved, you know, being involved somewhere because internet radio, it's portable. So as long as you've got an internet connection, take your laptop with you or use an app like EasyCast or Pocket Streamer that can work off an iPhone and just go live from nothing but uh, an iOS device, and that's it, you're, you're present at a, um, an event. 
Hey you, yes you, did you know you can start your very own radio station right now for free? Yes, for free. Simply click the link in the corner to start your seven day free trial today catering for that local community. But yeah, you don't absolutely don't have to create a community station. You know, it can just be, as I say, a passion project, playing what you want. You don't, you don't matter who listens or how many people listen, you just want to be an awesome radio station, your dream radio station. But it's also worth thinking about, you know, particularly in the long run, like potential monetization of your station. You can appeal to local businesses, charge them a small reoccurring fee for loyalty, and, you know, share that, uh, you know, uh, quick posts on Facebook, <clears throat> excuse me, get people on Facebook to share all that content. And again, you're drumming up business for that local community because people, the people who are sharing that content are people who are the demographic of that business. So monetization can be a great way of drumming up business if you're a community, local, uh, a focus station. Uh, again, it can drum up, as I say, content about what's going on in the community. Um, it can, you know, if you're reporting local news and stuff, it gets people giving their impressions. And, you know, it's just, it's it, particularly during the pandemic, uh, obviously, which is obviously still ongoing, but, you know, particularly during the, 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 the most extreme lockdown periods is there was such a huge outcry for um, community or sticking with your community, being able to share information, checking in on loved ones. And radio and podcasting was a huge way that helped that cause. And so, you know, it can just be that checking in with your local community. So it's, it's mainly just a question. Are you going to be a community station or not? You don't have to be a community station. It's a buzzword people like to use. But, you know, it can be a great way to bring longevity to your radio station if you are community and local focused because it hones down on what you may want to cover and how you might be able to grow the station in the future. And the penultimate ducky is all about launching your station. Now, what I mean by this is, well, launching your station, of course, but it's doing it in a clever way that benefits you and your audience in a way that you are not overwhelming your audience with too much information, you're not doing too much work, and you can all have a successful launch day. So the first step of doing that really is, first of all, attracting that audience. So if you think about it, if you just tell people, listen to my station on this day, or you launch right on the spot, you know, how many people are actually going to just take you up on it when they don't know anything about your station and you just told them, click here? You know, it's not the most attractive sort of call to action, is it? So something that you can work towards that, which is a, a bit of advice I would always give someone when they're launching their station is pick a date in mind, maybe two months, maybe something like that is, is quite a good generous amount of time. So relation to this time of recording, let's just say the 1st of August is when I want to launch my station in roughly two months time. Um, now, maybe four weeks before that, maybe 1st of July or at the very latest mid-July, that's when I want to do almost like a soft launch of the station. So how I kind of define what, what I personally mean by soft launch is at that time, you want to have something that you can promote, something that actually people can get a taste, a flavor of your radio station from that they can't get from just an image that says, please listen to my station. So have a thing, you know, two weeks before launching, so mid-July, let's say, I have a playlist playing on my radio station, which is an hour long. And within that playlist, it contains a bit of music um, related to what I'm going to be playing, or it's a bit of conversation that we're going to be discussing on a daily basis on my talk station. It's got a flavor of what sort of personalities and hosts, uh, some humor, some critical debate, some intellect, you know, whatever it is, it needs to be a showreel of everything people can expect on your station from day one. You know, here's just a taste of what you can expect. If you want to continue listening, then you know where to go. Join us on August 1st. That's the idea with it. So if you are doing posts on Facebook, you know, all the social media platforms and things, and if you say, I'm launching my station, Phil Radio, on August 1st, but for a taste of what's to come, check this out. And it's literally just an hour-long playlist that is looped every day, every hour, which back to, you know, back to the start for a whole two, three, four weeks or whatnot. And it's literally just a way to pitch what my station's about. Why should people care about my station? What makes my station different to someone else? What makes me as a personality on the radio different than other personalities on the radio? Sure, I'm a small fish in a massive pond, so I've got to make sure people are more invested in me as early as possible. As I say, you can't expect people just to immediately begin flocking to your station when they don't know anything about it. And, you know, there's nothing to sway them away from what they're listening to already. 
If you've got something to kind of gauge a bit of interest, a bit of hype, a bit of intrigue, they're more likely to make the jump and at least listen to you on launch day. So have a little showreel, a demo, a highlight of what people can expect, and you've actually got something to put in front of people. It's a much more beneficial call to action telling people, just click this link and you'll and that'll tell you everything about my station. So that's why I recommend. And kind of related to that as well is the actual launch day. So again, you're gearing towards August 1st. Now, it's all well and good that you might have loads of DJs lined up. You've built loads of playlists. You're ready to go. You've got 12 to 2, you're going to be playing some 90s music. 2 to 4, you're going to have a big intellectual conversation about biscuits. And then 4 to 6, you're going to be playing some heavy metal or R&B or something like that. That's great that you've got such an intricate weaving of shows all together. But it's also no point advertising everything you've got on your station because it's overwhelming for people to try and grasp. You know, if you, ideally, if you want to tell people to listen to your station, it needs to be a post long. It needs to be a tweet long. We're launching August 1st, joining from 12 on this web link for this. That's all it needs to be. Once people are listening to that launch day show, you can then use that show to advertise what's coming up next. You know, because if people like what they hear they're going to stick around. You know, they might be interested in learning more about the history of biscuit making or, you know, you know some music that you're going to be listening to. But you just need to make it as signposted, as simple. Uh, well, that's the key word. You need to make it as simple to get people to a location at a specific time. And if you tell them, you know, a full 24-hour schedule of what's coming on your station, that's an awful lot of information to try and take in. And it misses ultimately what you want them to do, which is go to a location at a specific time. So just, you know, pad out your show, make it a 24-hour play, do whatever you like, but concentrate on that opening show and just concentrate most of your promotional efforts into telling people to go to a location to listen to that show at that time. Once they're in, you can then open up your station more. So that's some tips really just to make your launch day a lot more beneficial and easy for you to manage. You know, it's still a very difficult task to make sure that launch day goes off without a hick. And, you know, it may not. It may, you know, it's more of an experiment, uh, an experiment and a bit of trial and error. But just most importantly, make it simple for people to find and enjoy. Uh, and then the final thing is kind of related to that. I touched on it earlier. Um, it's just a bit of reiteration, expectations, setting your expectations. Just to reiterate what I discussed earlier is it's not going to take off overnight. I mean, if you promote your station incredibly well and you follow some guidance I've mentioned and you've nailed that launch day, you never know, you may get a huge influx of audience right from day one. You need to keep them there, of course. They may just be quite fickle because a lot of radio, TV audiences, podcast audiences are quite fickle. As soon as something different comes along, not even necessarily better, they'll probably move along. Um, so you need to, there's going to be a lot of work to keep your audiences there. But Manage your expectations because we get a lot of people who do broadcast for a very small period of time, a month or two, and they're upset and disheartened that they've got no listeners. And it's like, well, of course you've got no listeners. You've only been broadcasting for 30 days. You need time for your promotional efforts to take effect. And if you haven't done any promotional efforts, well, that's kind of why. You know, the actual running of your station is the easy bit. You know, that's catered for by Radio.co. You know, we keep your station ticking so you don't need to worry about that. You're going to be spending more of your time doing your content and making sure people know about your radio station. They're raving about it. They're telling their friends they know where to go to listen to it. So just manage your expectations. And a way to help with that, again, I mentioned this earlier, a way to help with that is to define yourself what success means to you. You know, is it getting a certain amount of listeners listening by the end of six months or 12 months, whatever, you know, if you've set your own personal goals that are achievable for you to hit, that's going to give you more encouragement to say, right, I've managed to grow my audience. I've got 50 people listening now. It's taken three months. Perfect. Well, in another three months, I want that doubled. I want that tripled. You know, that that's what you need to work towards. You need to broadcast for at least six months before you can reflect on that station and go, okay, well, that worked. Maybe I should change that or maybe or maybe launching that show didn't go to plan. Maybe I need to put it on a different time or maybe I need to make it shorter. You know, six months in, you can assess what you think has worked and ideally you've got listeners there or you can reach out to people and ask them for some feedback. You then use the following six months to implement those changes. Then after 12 months, so your station has been going on for 12 months, that's the first time where you can look back and go, mm, okay, was that a waste of time? Is this something I should be doing? Am I good at this? And 
throughout all of those, you know, we're always here to help in any way we can. You know, as I said at the top of this entire series, we are just a bunch of big radio nerds. You know, we've got lots of different experience in different areas of radio, whether it's engineering backgrounds in radio or presenting or producing, marketing, whatever it is. If there's anything we can help with, just ask away. You ask any questions and we'll help you tailor and cater your station in the best way possible that works for you and your audience. And now the final thing I'm going to cover is just a couple of frequently asked questions, a lot of quick fire questions based on what, again, what people ask me uh, quite often. Um, so first one, where can I get music for my station? Radio.co doesn't have any music built into the platform. We don't have a library that you can use within our platform. So it all needs to be sourced yourself. And it's always best to source your own music in MP3 file format or AAC file format, because anything that you upload can then be stored on your cloud server built into as many playlists as you like. Uh, everything works on automation and it runs itself without you having to monitor it all the time. That's why it's always best to upload um, your content here. Um, but of course you can purchase music. You know, I quite have a lot of CDs still, so I still burn a lot of music for my radio station. Uh, a site we tend to steer people towards is one called I Like Music. Uh, has really professional grade, great music. You know, the claim to have every... Every track that's ever been in the UK charts, most tracks that have ever been in the Billboard charts. So for mainstream music, it's a fantastic place to go. And there are other places. There are a place called Zip DJ, which is great to get all your DJ mixes. And you can subscribe to services where you get the latest music through, whether it's DJ or new hits from uh, artists, get them through on a, on a weekly basis. There are lots of places to get music from. You can, of course, stream music as part of a live broadcast, but I say for, um, you know, for, for actual best way of broadcasting live and automated shows is purchasing your music. And we, again, we have a guide on where to get music from help.radio.co. Just type in music and you'll find a guide there. Um, what are the policies surrounding profanity? A lot of people ask me, um, you know, am I allowed to swear on my station? You know, can I say rude words and things? And the idea is, yes, it just comes down to a personal preference of whether you want to, you know, there's no overarching organization, as again, that tells you how you can and can't broadcast. So you can swear to your heart's content if you want. Um, topics of conversation or things that, that you say do still come under certain terms of use, like our software and other certain things and behavior we'd rather you you, um, um, you stuck to. Um, but in terms of the language that you use, it's totally up to you. You just need to make sure that it's right for your audience. It's all, you know, you could play a sweary track or you could swear a lot in your conversations, but is... The, the mannerisms that you're using, you know, is that foul language that you're using, is it isolating some of your audience? Is, is that what your audience want to hear? There's no point trying to be a community radio station and you are being a bit vulgar or a bit out there because that is going to be isolating for a community. So it just comes down to personal preference of what you and your audience ultimately are going to um, uh, enjoy. Um, can I take callers and guests on air with me? Yes, you can. Touched it earlier on the live broadcasting thing. Great ways if you've got a piece of kit like this that has Bluetooth built into it. Zap your calls across to that. Fade them in on air. Bob's your uncle. They're on air. Bob's your uncle's on the line and they're on your show right there. Um, other ways you can use things like Bort and our broadcasting tool to take your inputs from any callers or guests that are perhaps on Zoom or Skype or Google Meet or something like that. And you can take the audio from your browser tab on your computer Put that into your live mix, and that's it there. Uh, they can be heard live on air. Again, we have a guide on how to best do that. But yes, as long as it's running through your computer, whether that's physically or virtually, it can be possible to quite easily take callers and uh, and, uh, and guests on air. Does my station have to be 24-7? No, it doesn't at all. As I say, there's no right or wrong way of broadcasting. We have plenty of people who broadcast once a day or once a week, or it's on automation 24-7. It's totally up to you. Just broadcast in a way that works for you in relation to how much time you can commit to your station. Um, you know, you don't want to overwhelm yourself and broadcasting becomes a burden because you're leaving yourself too many tasks to do at the end of an already very busy day. So it just comes down to what works for you. You can always scale up your station, make it packed with more shows, broadcast more often during the week. Just find what works for you right from the off. Can my radio station be on demand? 
Yes, it can. You do have to use something adjacent to Radio.co, like our sister company, Podcast.co, or Mixcloud, as I mentioned earlier. Um, But yeah, making your radio programs in some form available on demand can help with the promotional efforts of your radio station. It can be very, very worthwhile. So yes, there is ways to do it. There are rules to follow, like, as I say, podcasting should only be strictly talk-based. So as long as you follow by that, you can very easily make your station available on demand. Can I monetize my station? Yes, you can. We don't have a specific monetization tool at the time of recording. So you do need to use something independent, um, you know, whether it is seeking out local businesses and paying them, you know, or sorry, they pay you to do some promotional material on your station, whether it's an ad you create or a live read that you do on air. Um, But because we don't have any involvement in it, it means you keep 100% of any revenue you make. You know, we're not entitled to any of that. Um, There are affiliate links you can do. You can put your station behind a paywall, although that's not recommended from the off. It's something you can grow into or you do have to. If you do that, you you should really offer your station available to some regards for free. Also have a premium paid for option. Um, if you want more real, in-depth, real, actually trial and error uh, methods of broadcasting live, we actually have a course you can pay for. We have a number of courses that we spend a lot of time and uh, and effort making. If you scroll down to our web page, right at the bottom, you'll see an option for courses, and it's called Internet Radio Cash, and that goes into great detail about lots of different ways that you can earn a, a good revenue from your station. Again, it's going to take time and effort before you may be able to get into that position. But check it out if you want a, a, a some, some really great industry tips on how to eventually work towards that. Can I get support and help with my station? Absolutely. So we, as I say, we are big radio nerds. We're eager to help in as many ways as possible to make broadcasting as simple and accessible and as beneficial as possible. So if you have any technical issues with your radio.co station, we are just an email away. You can email me, studio at radio.co, the support team, help at radio.co, whatever you need, even if it's just an answer to a silly question or it's something you're just confused about, or you just want a bit of advice on anything. We're just an email away to help in any way we can. We'll never just leave you on your own. And the final question is, is it possible to broadcast to FM? Radio.co is exclusively an online radio platform, so it is only possible to broadcast natively to, um, to, well, across the internet. If you currently have an FM or AM radio station, it is possible to use our platform to simultaneously broadcast across the internet. We have an awful lot of stations who do that. We provide online streams for these terrestrial radio stations. You use the station in a very... Base, sorry, use our platform in a very basic way, but is possible to just send out a simultaneous internet stream. It doesn't work the other way around, sadly, or rather there's no proper way of doing it. You could, again, if you already had access to an FM radio station or you were acquiring one, uh, you know, you had your own transmitter and frequency in a studio, you could stream your online radio source to your FM audience. Um, that's a way of doing it, but it's quite hokey in the sense that it does require constant monitoring and internet and power to manage it. So it's, it's not ideal. So yes and no, primarily no, I'd say it's not uh, the best platform to use for FM broadcasting. Um, well, there we have it. You know, that's, that's kind of everything all about internet broadcasting, everything from equipment and software, live broadcasting. And I hope those few frequently asked questions and these sort of strategies I mentioned strapped to the bottom of these ducks has been useful. But of course, if there's anything outstanding that you haven't heard an answer for or you just want to have a chat, please send me an email, studio at radio.co. Or if you would like a one-to-one chat, I do an awful lot of demos every day of the week um, and they cover sort of, you know, the the platform, um, any particular questions and advice about anything. I say, big radio nerd right here. So if there's anything I can do, help you understand better our software or to really steer you in the right direction to launching your own dream internet radio station in the most efficient way possible, then please schedule a demo with me or another member of the team. You can do that by going to our website and clicking the book a demo button or just go to our website directly, radio.co forward slash demo. And there you will see the option to fill out a form, schedule a time that works for you, and I look forward to having a chat. 
If you would like access to more webinars, tutorials, courses, and just general reviews and everything to do with Raid.co and the equipment we use and the software we want to talk to you about, then be sure to like, subscribe, and follow our YouTube channel at any time you like. And again, anything you need at all, but always an email away to really make launching your internet radio station as honestly, as easy, straightforward, and enjoyable as it actually surprisingly is. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed this Back to Basics course. I hope it's fueled you with all that encouragement and confidence to just go out and bring your own online radio station to life. Until next time, all the best, take care, and happy broadcasting. And just before you go, have you ever thought about launching your very own internet radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot easier than you may think, especially when you make the time to chat to myself or a member of the Radio.co team. To do just that, head to our website, radio.co forward slash demo, where I can talk about your plans, any questions you may have, and you know, me and the team can really get you up to speed in launching your own internet radio station in literally minutes. It couldn't be easier. Why not check out some of our webinars, tutorials, help guides, situated uh, around me or why not visit our website radio